If you follow my ministry at all, you know that a lot of the things that we do as a ministry is we pray and we ask God to speak to us for the body of Christ at large. And one of the things that God showed me this week is that he really wants to help those of you who either are walking with somebody who has a medical issue or you have a medical issue that you're looking to God to help you with. He wants to help you all the way through the process. And of course, God brings supernatural healing. But what do you do when he doesn't? How do you respond to the world around you, to suffering, to the pain of sickness or disease when you don't see a supernatural healing? And is there help still? And one of the things that I've learned from just suffering from a couple of things, I've had chronic m- malaria at different times from some of the countries I went to. I also had a parasite that was so bad that I was almost dying in, back in the year 2000. And I had a chronic back injury. Two of those three things I was healed up. I still have chronic malaria that hasn't activated because I haven't been to any of those places that I can activate from. But I know that in pursuing God, some of the times I've had to pursue God, I've pursued the medical process. And God's given me incredible doctors and medical staff around me and even nutritionists and people who are great with physical therapy and even people who are holistic doctors who've given us some of the greatest advice and help me to come into a different measure of journey. Now, what I realize is that most people, when they go through a medical journey, a lot of the psychology behind it shows that people want to isolate, they get afraid, there's anxiety connected to it. As a matter of fact, most people are only willing to go through one or two medical processes for one or two medical systems before they kind of get into a give up mode for a while because it's so traumatizing if it's something like cancer or if it's something or leukemia, if it's something like ALS or something else that's debilitating to the point of death, a lot of people will go through just the one process. To, it, that's It seems to be not, not as comfortable, the most comfortable towards them. Uh, because it's so hard to think that there might be a better quality of life or that there might be resources or tools that God wants to bring you that take a lot of work to do. Now, if you've ever had to climb an uphill battle, maybe you've um, never worked out before and you started a workout journey, or maybe you had to start eating healthy. Maybe it was with your finances, learning how to budget. When you're learning how to do something and there's trauma connected to it and sickness and disease, there's almost always trauma connected to it. It is hard to reposition yourself to come into a thriving place in your relationship with God and your relationship to yourself and your body because there's so many things attached to it. Every medical process has a measure of reports where doctors tell you what's wrong with you or they tell you things that you can and can't do. And a lot of times that those limitations of those reports, it's hard to look past those. As a matter of fact, one doctor may say one thing, another doctor may give you a completely different report. It might be over your mental health. One doctor tells you you're dealing with this kind of mental condition. One doctor tells you you're dealing with this mental condition. And now you have two labels on you and you're not sure how to walk that on life. But the Bible is filled with scriptures that are not anti medical help. As a matter of fact, the Bible is very full of medical help scriptures. And I think that God wants to put on you his presence and show you how to walk through or walk someone through if they're in your life. Maybe it's a family member or close friend, help them to walk through a medical process where they could be in victory and on the victory end of God's grace and compassion, his empathy, but also use the tools that are available that he's put on the earth to live the best quality of life that they can, even if there's a disability, a mental health issue, if there's a debilitating disease, that even if there's not a healing, there's still a honor in the way we walk out the medical process in the in the process of the life that God's given us. He's only given us one life. And one of the things that I've struggled with a few with a few of my medical struggles was uh, isolation or independence or not wanting to rely on a medical process or or getting sick of the medical process or getting sick of getting prayer, all those things. So I've gone through some of that that maybe some of you can relate to. And there's even worse things you can go through than I've gone through, of course. And so I can relate a little bit with empathy and compassion towards when you don't want to engage a process anymore. It's so hard to keep your spirit and your heart and your mind engaged intentionally towards a process of overcoming. And I've watched people who have a, a small thing as like get a leg injury, a shoulder injury, and they don't want to go to a physical therapist. They don't want to go to a doctor or they have a knee replacement, hip replacement. They don't want to go through the full physical therapy because it's painful. It's hard. It's exhausting. It's annoying. I mean, it's a big thing. It's annoying. And it takes a lot of work to overcome. And then I have people like my you know, ministry partner, Bob Hassan from Exploring the Marketplace, who's had, I think, 27 surgeries. He's going to tell you probably more. And he's had hips replaced, knees replaced, these kinds of things, and shared these things very publicly on our platform uh, together. And he's gone through, I've watched him behind the scenes, go through the work all the way through physical therapy, all the way through corrective surgeries, anything he would need, because he says, I want to be there for my children, my grandchildren, my wife. I want to be the full version I could be. And if there's any work I could put into it, I'm going to do the work. And I love seeing him do that because I feel like that's not my default. So seeing someone else do that helps me to come into a place to stand in the place of faith where there's an urgency attached to it, where it's not about me anymore. It's not about I'm suffering or I'm going through something, but it's about me choosing 
love, me choosing life, me choosing with my body to honor God and honor those in my life and even honor myself in a way that's not necessarily normal. And the Bible is so helpful for this. I want to read a few scriptures. Genesis 17, 10 through 14 actually commanded the procedure of circumcision to Abraham and God ordained this minor, minor surgery. So there's obviously nothing bad about human skin, cutting the flesh, cutting, you know, about, about working that way, working as a physician. I know it's such a funny scripture, but we see all the way from the Old Testament in the very beginning of Genesis, surgery. We see this has always been a part. Physicians have always been a part. Holistic uh, medical help has always been a part. You know, we even saw when Jesus was delivered from the wise men, the uh, essential oils. These were not just nice perfumes. These were things that were given for the sake of the health of the child, for the sake of the health of the family. And they were expensive. They were expensive properties because they were so respected. Genesis uh, 52, physicians are called Joseph's servants. And the word for physicians here is the same word that God uses for healer in Exodus 15, 26. So God looks at it as, I give some people you know, the ability to relate to me as a healer by being physicians. And that was never supposed to be separate, that God has a heart for those of you who work in the medical industry, who want to see people live their best life to get better to get healed, or to even serve in hospice to help people engage the end of the life well, and that passing over well, Proverbs seventeen twenty two. I love this, because you don't always think of it this way. But it says, a merry heart does good like medicine. And I love this, because it doesn't say that medicine is negative, it doesn't cast medicine in a negative light, it actually says a merry heart is like medicine to your to your soul, to, to your heart. And joy is a medicine to you. And so medicine is in a good light in this. Again, the Bible's not anti medicine. The Bible's actually Jesus loves science. God loves science. He invented a structure that we could relate to everything he's created on the earth. And science is part of that. Biology is part of that. Medicine's part of that. He I think that God inspires inventions like penicillin and things all the time that became properties that have saved millions of lives, if not billions of people. And God is the God who authors creativity, even over our health process. And so sometimes when you start to realize the Bible is not anti this, the Bible's pro physicians, the Bible's pro surgery sometimes or pro medicine, like a heart, you know, joy does a heart like good medicine, then we start to get courage to embrace a medical process that maybe we're saying, I'm just gonna wait for God to heal me. Well, God doesn't heal everybody. We see that. I mean, everyone in heaven will be complete in their body. But we see even as someone who's prayed for a lot of people for healing and had some small level of success, there's still a lot of people who don't get healed by a supernatural miracle that God has put the medical field on the earth and we have the most advanced medical field in history so that you can have a result in life, but you gotta engage it. You have to look for those tools. Isaiah 38, verse 21, we, we saw the prophet Isaiah, and he's prescribing a poultice for Hezekiah's boil. So while the healing may have been supernatural, he had to have the poultice, maybe it was only symbolic, but maybe it was totally true, it was not considered wrong. So healing can come not just with supernatural, but it could come with a hand in hand with a doctor or with a, you know, a, a holistic doctor or with somebody who understands some of the plants on the earth, or you know, we have Nutramedics, which is one of our main sponsors, and they understand how to look for medicinal properties, nutraceutical properties in plants and in items on the earth that they then extract the best of. And you could have supplements, you could have things that help you sleep, things that help you with your hormones, things that help you with just all kinds of things with support you during carrying a disease or carrying something in your body, things that help you to have a detox of things that are in our food systems. And you go to Nutramedics today, and if you enter the code BOWLS at checkout, you're gonna get 20% off. I'm gonna encourage you to get the things for your body that you need. And some of you are saying, I need to detox. Well, go there. They have an incredible detox. They have incredible things for, they have mood medics, and it's all natural with no side effects. And some of you might need help right now with stress or anxiety with your mood. And they have things for you there that are natural. Well, Isaiah used this in Isaiah 38, verse 21. And again, there could have been a supernatural element to what he was doing, and that the politics was just an act, or it could have been totally that. Jeremiah 8, 22. The statement about the balm of Gilead uh, shows that God approves physicians, even if it's only metaphorically. And then you have Jeremiah 30, verse 13. It equates a lack of medicine with a, a consequent of a lack of healing. And so you have the Bible supporting medicine and s surgeries and structures of this. And I'm not saying all medicine is good, and I'm not saying that we don't use wisdom over all that. But I'm telling those of you who are suffering with somebody that you have a biblical precedence to engage everything around you to go through one more process for healing. Maybe you've been in a chronic affliction that there's not a lot of help for in the traditional medicine. Well, God has put so many people with wisdom. And he's given people words of knowledge. One of the things I loved about Nutramedics, and I'm not saying this now to promote the company, but I'm just saying it in the stories of talking to the people who launched Nutramedics, Tim, specifically the, the founder, 
is that they asked God for words of knowledge over plants and they brought botanists and they brought medical scientists in and, uh, and the, even people who deal with food and they brought them in to look and study and identify different properties of different plants, specifically at that time from Peru. Now they do different plants from all over. And they, they had a heart to spread the gospel, but they said, God, there's people who are so sick and is there anything with these plants? And they would ask God to lead them on journeys, medical journeys down into these countries and they would find plants and then God would show them how to use them. And they have some of the top products in the world that they have in Nutramedics because they went on a journey with God to hear God. So there's people out there who are hearing God with discernment over what's on the earth right now. And some of you need to know that and hear that because Man, that's so important. Well, I love this one because Ezekiel 30, 21, it speaks of Pharaoh's arm being broken but not being healed because it wasn't bound up. So it was a metaphor for the people of you know in Ezekiel to hear. But God was using this symbol of if he had just got his arm bound up, he would have been healed, but he was stubborn or he had pride. These are really important. There's another verse in the Old Testament, Ezekiel 47, verse 12. And there's healing medicine that will be made from the leaves of trees that are nourished by the waters for the new temple and the new Jerusalem. And in Revelation 22, verse 2 echoes that scenario. And I think that's a really profound thought that there's medicine from trees that are at the river that can sustain our full life. I've talked to several people who work, whether it's Jordan Rubin with Ancient Nutrition, who's a food scientist, or whether it's a nutritionist, or whether it's in Josh Axe's partner, or whether it's Tim from Nutramedics. And they've said the same thing over and over. These people who work in nutraceuticals or work with with uh, properties of herbs and supplements. They've said everything we need for the fullness of our healing is on the earth already. God provided it from the beginning, but it's just, we have to discover it. We have to discover how to use it and what it's used for. And we're watching science and technology and AI also bring breakthroughs. And so we live in a day where, you know, medical science is saying that diabetes will be passe in the next 25 years, that there will be no more diabetes, or there will be complete healing for the diabetes that exists. We live in a day where people are saying malaria will be gone in our lifetime. We live in a day that people are saying AIDS epidemic will be over in our lifetime. So we already have a number of proclamations from medical scientists and medical science groups and even medical colleges. So there's obviously hope, great hope in the medical field. In the midst of that, you might be going through something right now that you don't have a lot of hope for. Or maybe you lost your hope. Maybe you went through a process and it failed you. Maybe your body failed the process and you feel betrayed by even the body that God gave you. And I wanna encourage you to just go to God, surrender it again to God and ask God for a new process. Then look for a process and ask God to speak to you, ask God to show you, ask God to resource you with friends and families and even people at your church who've gone through something similar. You are not alone. And what you're suffering with and struggling with, even if it's a one of a kind thing, there's people who've gone through something similar that can turn on empathy and compassion that just might make the difference of you living a normal life or leading a life that's fully God-centered with a God result. And even in the midst of struggling with something physical, whether it's a handicap or any of the things we've talked about, you can still struggle towards a place of faith. And God can make your weakness, he can make his strength made perfect by your weakness and make an incredible life. And I think of people like Nick Vujicic, who, you know, the life without limbs, he doesn't have arms and legs. And God didn't give him the miracle. And yet God's given him this incredible platform and life where he has the fullness of God even in the midst where God's perfection and beauty and strength is made perfect in Nick's weakness. And God may heal him one day. We might see the biggest miracle that'll make international news because of that. But even if he doesn't, Nick is living the best life that he could possibly live with God that's even above people who don't have the same disability because of his yes for Jesus. So I'm gonna encourage you to give God, surrender to God your process medically again, surrender it physically. And we have a, a school online called Spiritual Growth Academy that some of you may not have heard about. And we help you to go on a journey over healing and deliverance and the spiritual gifts and especially hearing God's voice. And if you're not in a current process of learning or growing in those areas, I wanna encourage you to come join our classes. They're live. Every week we have a live class for you and they change every every month so you guys can join a class about like this month it's spiritual gifts next month it's going to be hearing god for the sake of deliverance there's past classes you know they're not live you get so much out of those classes but this month's class with charity verkler kayambe are so profound because you're going to learn how to use god's spiritual gifts every day in your life and there's no one who teaches it quite like charity and you could ask her questions get impartations and there's even activations live so i'm going to encourage you to come and you can join by going to bullsministries.com and clicking on academy or spiritual growth academy or clicking on the banner that looks like the banner below for those of you who are seeing this visually and we'd encourage you to come to this class we can't wait to see you there we have an incredible team that puts on these classes that's there for your spiritual growth well if this resonated with you today about your own healing journey if you need prayer for that make sure to hashtag my turn below that's our 
our hashtag for these Sunday morning prophetic videos. I'm gonna encourage you, hashtag my turn. It is your turn for God to move powerfully in your life. And we're praying with you. I pray over every single person who hashtags my turn. And a lot of you will leave details over what you need prayer for. Feel free to do that if you're not being private about it. Feel free to put it there. And myself and then also the community of people who've been involved with us on YouTube, we're praying for each other. So don't be in the journey alone. We're gonna pray for you and we'll see you next time. Thank you.